You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene Johnson. Oh, AfterBuzz TV. AfterBuzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Opposite Worlds After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Opposite Worlds After Show. There we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> what's up, everybody? You are tuning in to AfterBuzzTV.com's Opposite Worlds After Show. I'm your host, James Wallington, and with me tonight is the wonderful... He's too busy dancing to even introduce himself, but... I got my Beyonce on. <laughs> it's Mikey. Ben Zaya. How's it going, Mikey? What's up, what's up? How you doing? I'm good. It's been a long day. It has. Yeah. It has. You've done a lot today. I have. But for everyone who's tuning in at home, I had the wonderful opportunity to speak with the host, Luke Tipple. Ooh. We had a little Skype date on Monday, and I have some footage that I like to share. To see. Let's hear what he has to say about the Let's show. It. Shoot it. <laughs> Hi, Luke. How's it going? It's going good, man. Good. Got a uh, much-needed day off today, um, but we're back to it tomorrow. Well, thank you for interviewing with me on your day off. I truly appreciate it. So let's just dive right into it, though, because I read somewhere online that you felt like there were advantages to living in both the future and the past. The only thing I can see about living in the past is that we want to root for them because of the situation they're in. What advantages are there that I'm just not seeing? The advantages for living in the different worlds are relatively <laughs> obvious. In the future, you don't have to really fight for survival. You're given the food you need uh, and the rest that you need. Um, so inevitably, uh, that team has potential to be stronger. What we're seeing, though, is a much greater social fallout in the future, where uh, the teams, uh, the teammates in the future, uh, um, a lot more strategic in trying to form alliances. They're more likely to sell out their um, their fellow players, and uh, we see a much more social game going on over there, where it is really kind of every man for himself. In the past, they're developing a very strong team dynamic. Um, they're forced to work together every day just to fulfil their household chores, and uh, you can see that there is a genuine bond being held there, uh, not just because they have to, because they're a team. Um, that's something that I find very interesting because you know the team that works together sticks together. That said, it's it's a harder life over there. Obviously, America loves the underdog, so they're you know we see in the popularity index, the guys living in the past are, uh, are doing much better in the in the Twitter popularity index. I completely mm. agree. But do you think maybe living in the past also gives them <laughs> a little bit more of an edge to fight harder to really want to win the competition? I think the competition is much more real for a team living in the past. They understand that they've been completely taken out of their environment, and it's something that you'll be familiar with. You know, you take somebody, put them in some in a completely foreign environment where they're having to live without their modern conveniences, and they very much understand that this is a game that they have to fight to win. It's not something they really want to be in. They, they didn't come here to live in the past. Um, they're, they're aware of the game, and they're fighting very hard. The thing holding up the future team within the actual members itself, they, they're all very competitive by nature, um, but I don't think they feel as strongly that they're in the middle of a game where, you know, so much is at stake. I, I think just that little bit of removal, they see it through the glass, but it doesn't really impact them as hard that we really could take everything away from you. Um, I think you really have to be sent to that world to really understand it. Well, do you think maybe since the future won the worldly challenge, had they sacrificed themselves to go to the past, that they'd be a little bit more likable on the popularity index? That could come in as a strategy at some point, no? I would say that that's a fairly uh, appropriate assessment. There's a hundred grand on the line. <laughs> you know, that's, that's a lot of money by anybody's standards. Um, and we want to see people fight for it. Um, I want to see people fight for it. I don't want people to take it for granted that, they, that they're that they there and they're going to make a whole lot of money. Um, and you know well that I like to push people as hard as I can. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to see them say, okay, we're here to play a game. We need to understand both perspectives of gameplay. Um, if they felt confident in their team's strength, I would like to see them send them back 
to the past, you know, electively to say, all right, we're here to conquer both sides of this game. And I think if they did that, they would have seen a, a much stronger response in the popularity index. Speaking of the popularity index, last week we saw JR be the most liked player and then Jeffrey be the least liked player. And of all odds, they're aligned together. Can you give us some insight on that? Between those two, it's going to be an interesting one to see how that falls out. Um, I think because the teams all live so closely, it's going to be very hard to keep an alliance like that secret and therefore effective. I'm interested to see how that one plays out, but I know they're scheming, and uh, we'll just see what happens in the next episode. <laughs> so what can we expect in the next episode and the weeks to come? We're going to see a lot of what people are asking for. You know, this is a new show, and that's something that people should be um, should be aware of. You know, in a game like uh, Big Brother, um, people know what they're getting into. They're not familiar at all with the environment. They're kind of unsure how to play the game, and that's what's really exciting to me. You know, seeing how they adapt to this new format through the first couple of episodes. You've gotten to know our players. You've gotten to know the format. Now you're going to start to see a lot more of how the alliances are going to work out, how the strategy plays out. Out for them and uh, and you'll see a lot more of you know how they're interacting as players within the game awesome I love it and who would have thought that nine months after being in the woods together we'd be skyping <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's good to see you all nicely cleaned up and shaven and, and looking happy and healthy mate you know even though I was harsh to you guys in the woods I'm uh, glad to see you all made it out happy and healthy <laughs> thanks Luke well good luck I can't wait to see how the show plays out and hopefully maybe we can get like a final interview at some point with this when yeah the show wraps. feel free to check in it's gonna be good perfect all right have a good one Luke cheers mate Cheers, mate. I love Luke. Well, talk about BFFs. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, like Luke and I do have history just because he was on, uh, he was the host of Capture, the show that I was on. Mm. So it, we had some, you know, good chemistry, yeah, I feel like. Nice guy. He seems like a really, really down to earth guy. Was yeah. it, you know, he gave a lot of good insight too, which I thought was pretty He good. definitely did. And I'm glad he, like, you know, affirmed a lot of my points of strategy in this game. Like, mm -hmm. we, we saw for the first time on last night's episode, diving right into last night's yes. episode, we saw Jesse even mention what. What if we win the worldly challenge today and throw ourselves into the past? What like do you think that would have been a good strategy? Uh, you know, I didn't agree with that strategy hmm. because I'm not about you know messing up a good thing. Um, so sure. that would that wouldn't have been something. <laughs> You don't agree with me. I disagree. Uh, so, well, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> surprise. I just don't feel like that would have been a smart decision. I think that you want to stick with what you have going. You don't want to throw yourself, because uh, it's going to happen sooner or later. Yeah. So why make it happen ahead of time? Well, you know, like I said, Jesse threw out the idea about electing themselves to go to the past. Lisette was even on board. She's like, I don't see like why that would be a bad yeah. idea. You know, this ultimately in the, the day, America has a lot to say. And mm -hmm. people who are winning all the America votes are people from the past. So Jesse, I think, is starting to pick up on that observation. The whole underdog. Well, even what Luke said in your interview with exactly. him. Exactly. The underdog. And I don't know, I don't want to think that way, but is that some way that they're trying to play the show out? Like, that we feel bad for certain cast members? Uh, and that's, that's why we point. vote? I, I hope not, because, you know, I want it to be a fair show, but... Yeah, well, it's, well I have a lot to say about I fairness just, when yeah. we get to that. At the end. <laughs> um, but we saw Jeffrey and Mercy kind of get really vocal very quickly. Well, before you get to that, I have one thing I want to throw sure. out real quick. I don't know if anyone else realized the way that Wyatt went out. Um, I know that we might be able to speak to Wyatt at some point. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I was surprised because he's usually pretty, you know, well comes together. He doesn't get himself crazy or emotionally out there. But he was a little upset when he went home. Yeah, he uh, did he throw a finger out or something? I think. I uh, that's. Think I mean, I a, didn't see that part, yeah. but I know a lot of people on Twitter were talking about that. So maybe I was surprised. We'll, maybe when Wyatt calls in yeah, at the I'd end like of the show, we can ask that. him. Hey. Yeah. What, what was that all about? Well, <laughs> what's the, <laughs> what's the bird on? flying around there? But like you said, Jeffrey, um, you know, Jeffrey, you know, he, he Mercy and Jeff, well, Jeffrey, I'm not surprised him, but Mercy now, who Where I Where did she come from? What happened? <laughs> Am I the only one that felt that way? I was very comfortable with her. I, I was like, join the team. You're doing great. And then out of nowhere, now Jesse's getting a lot of slack. I think that they need to cut him, you know, leave him alone. He's doing the right thing. He's playing the game right. And she went right after him like it's like the easy target. Do you feel that way? Well, yeah, she got very vocal, and her mm -hmm. eyes were kind of bugging out. She was very intense about how she was feeling. She's like, I'm an athlete, Her and eyes hygiene's are always, important. Yeah. Her eyes are always bugging <laughs> out, let's be honest. She's very intense. But I, I was shocked, and even Jesse said, did America know this about you yeah. when they were voting you into the competition? Called her out. I said, uh, yeah. no, I didn't. <laughs> and I you voted got, for you. You got played. <laughs> yeah, 
I got played. Well, she's Who in there now. Girl? Now what are you going to do? I mean, it's nice to see a little fire in her because it yeah. has another dynamic to their team. You know, bigger personality. It's always fun to watch yeah. for entertainment purposes. But like you said, Jeffrey wasn't much of a shock there. No. no. I'm not surprised by anything that Jeffrey does. He's or a he whiner. Says. He, and, you know, supposedly he doesn't, it's not real crying, he tells us in the episode, but... I mean, he cries every five minutes. Whether he thinks it's going to make America yeah. vote him I think that's ever. he's going for the sympathy vote. Yeah, but it's not working. We just want you to leave. If we could vote you out ourselves, you, you would Ooh, be no, gone I, already. I don't want him to leave because he's uh, pure entertainment. I no. want him to stay. I just don't want him to win. <laughs> yeah. There's bigger entertainment, though, on the show. Oh, I'd rather have Mercy than Jeffrey. No, no, I'm keeping Jeffrey around at least until he gets braces. Hold on. The other. We need to rewind for a second. Yeah. We're calling Jeffrey... Jeffrey. Oh no, that's a mistake. Jeff Fry. Excuse Jeff Fry. me. Jeff probably Fry. confusing everybody. <laughs> I know. No, there, there's a, it's Jeff Fry. But like Jeff I Fry. said, at least until he gets braces, then I'm good. He can go home. Oh, I'm, that's what I was saying the whole time during the episode tonight. <laughs> so after we see them come back and kind of discuss things, they're thrown into this worldly challenge, and this by far has been my favorite worldly challenge mm-hmm. we've seen so far because of how. How technology was a huge factor in this. You saw the the, the robot, the Vigo, yes. being operated. Mm-hmm. So Luke comes out, the contestants are blindfolded, and this whole challenge is going to be tested on communication mm-hmm. and their strategy skills as a team. What were your thoughts when you saw this challenge? I mean, I love the challenge. I thought it was very thought out. I enjoy seeing that stuff, being from the competition world. But I kind of got a different... This is why I think that I am a white team member here. I feel like they play to their strengths. Jesse controlling communication, and then mm-hmm. Frank was kind of just in beast mode, as Lauren would say, or yeah. excuse me, as Rachel would say. Um, and then the Brown team, they took the approach that everyone, you know, take your pieces. Like, this, I, I don't know how you go about it, James, but if we were in a game, if you have a strength, you're going to bring that strength ahead, and you're going to go full force. Absolutely. I can't sit here and play Kumbaya, mm-hmm. and I feel like that's what your team is doing. I mean, I, I can definitely see what you're saying, but I think them picking Sam was the best that was their that was their asset in that challenge. Sam yeah. was really effective in communicating. She was a good communicator. The team just didn't move fast. I guess they that's what it was. Yeah, so it didn't gel. They yeah, just there was no momentum. Yeah, that was really keeping them at the forefront. And Frank, I guess with Frank to to play devil's advocate, no one had really much of a choice because he's mm-hmm. the biggest guy there, and he just pulls you wherever he wants to go. That's a good point. So and that was kept just saying kinda, that. Yeah. Um, what did you think about their decision to sit out Mercy? Uh, smartest decision ever. Yeah. Yeah, because you can't trust someone to your team like that that is already throwing daggers. You can't put her in a competition because you don't know what she's going to do. She's unreliable. I agree. Had she kept her mouth shut that morning, they probably yes. would have put her in there because I think it is important to assess her strengths mm-hmm. coming in late into the game. But they were smart because she's a little explosive. She came out of Can nowhere. you imagine her being tethered to that contraption and like moving around in that mud? Oh, no. She would have been on Diva. No, she would have she been bad. It her been eyes would have bugged through the blindfold. <laughs> She kind of looked like the little Verizon guy. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, right. She was, oh, my gosh. She was too intense for me. But the, the, did you notice that they were saying, like, when Jesse was trying to give them insight, like, mm-hmm. they were like, I can't hear Jesse. I can't hear Jesse. Like, no one was communicating on either. So it was just. That's a good point. I loved, though, that the end, I, I don't know if anyone else caught this. Maybe I, my math sucks, but. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Epoch did it in 23 minutes and 26 seconds, while Cro- Team Kronos 18. did it in 18 minutes mm-hmm. and 2 seconds. Luke said the difference of time between the teams was 5 minutes and 28 seconds. Are you saying that Luke can't do math? Well, I'm not saying Luke can't do math. Oh, okay. Whoever's writing his script clearly had a typo or a mistake, because that's not 5 minutes and 28 wow, seconds. Wow, James, nothing gets by you. <laughs> well, <I was> gonna... <laughs> that's no joke. I mean... You know, I think you can relate. Having been on a show, it's yeah. interesting to pick out well, flaws they don't let editing. anything. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to point that out. What's what's the truth? I mean, I could call Mrs. Bracco right now. She was my eighth grade algebra teacher, and she could try to figure it out for us. But the bottom line is, my team, you know, kick some butt again. <laughs> exactly. Not a not a surprise. But I really would have liked to have seen Jesse's strategy play out. I really, for a second, yeah. had hoped that they were going to elect themselves to go to the past. Yeah. So. And you know what? I don't think they. I didn't think it was going to happen. But if they did, it would have definitely added to some entertainment. I agree. It would have switched things up. And I, I was hoping that in a weird way that this episode, so this episode would be the episode that they did. That someone got brought over. It was, it's just the same thing. It's consistent. Yeah. And I mean, until you get to the tub scene with, um, you know, Sam, that was not <laughs> consistent, <laughs> which we'll get to later. Which I really thoroughly enjoyed the episode. <laughs> I'm sure you did. <laughs> Thank so, you, sci-fi. Uh, the teams come back to their their you know their sides, the past and the future. Yes. And this is when we actually see Angela that 
that flavor, that feistiness come out of her where mm-hmm. she's like, I don't, I want to get mean. I'm ready to get aggressive. I yeah. want to throw Frank or Jesse in. I just don't care anymore. Yeah. So she's kind of sealing her own fate without even realizing it by being vocal about wanting to fight harder and yeah. be feisty in these kind of competitions. Yeah, she was ready to uh, throw him in. She was gung-ho on it. And then it's funny because later on, when they bring that up, she's kind of like, oh, wait, I said that? That's going to happen? Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Stand Sorry, by your word. Angela. Seems to be a continued problem with this team. Yeah, she kind of foreshadowed her fate yeah, without well, even realizing that's it. Like a, that's an English term now. We went from math to English. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, after you know they go back and they celebrate. You have what did they have on that platter? Was it like a, a pig fetus almost? Like did you see that? <laughs> a pig fetus. I don't know. It was like this really I like. I think it was just pig. Sh- yeah, it might have just been pork. It was really small and like it looks really gross. Yeah, it was. I mean, I can't believe I just said pig fetus. <laughs> I, was like, I don't even know if you would call it a pig fetus, but uh, it could have been. Well, they had some really disgusting thing. Yeah, on something that, that James would not eat is no. what he's telling us. He was not no, no, feeling no. it. But they had, you know, there was some fruit. They there was fruit. some fruit, yeah. yeah. But the other side, oh, they always get to eat they so got, lavishly. They got the best. They got everything you need. Yeah, I was watching that. And did you see that they have, like, I don't know, this is a little topic, but the, the bathroom towel warmers. Uh, that's <laughs> yeah. something I call too. Like, I was like, okay, towel warmers. And then it's complete opposite. I feel, te- I feel terrible for. How would you feel sitting, like, let's say you're on the, fu- oh, on the past side for a second. Okay. Just, just envision that. Vision and I'm on the future that. side and I'm eating and drinking my champagne. And I'm just watching. And you're like three weeks into this, not eating anything. How would you feel? Like shit. Yeah. <laughs> Like, and they purposely yeah. put the tables, you know, parallel to each other through the glass. Yeah. It's just like, you really have, you know. And especially if it's someone I don't like or the other teammate is someone that I despise, then it's going to be pretty a brutal. Yeah, it's it, they do that on purpose. So I think it's to, you know, up I the ante. Agree. Up the ante. So uh, teams move into the present. I know we're kind of mm-hmm. breezing by on the first ep- last night's episode, but there is a lot of things that I really liked. Like last night in the present, you know, Blue comes out. Mm-hmm. He announces who is the least liked and the most liked. Yes. And it's no surprise that Lauren was the most liked from Epoch. And Again, someone mm-hmm. from Epoch being the most liked. And, and then, then, unfortunately, least favorite. the least favorite, Jesse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I'm a huge Jesse fan. Me too. All right, good. Because I didn't know, you know, I wasn't at first, but he's just really playing the game smart. He's holding back when he needs to. He's, you know, he's delegating mm-hmm. and he's leading, but there's so many people on his team that are not letting him do his job. Yeah. Jeff Rye. Um, and now yep. Mercy. Yeah. So it's kind of getting the way. But you know what? He. Quote me now. He will make it. to the, If he not win, he will make it to the end. I agree. He's, he's definitely going to make it far. But, you know, what I thought was great is that Frank, uh, I think Frank offered to help out also with um with the situation. Uh, yeah. He wasn't the least favorite, Frank. But yeah, because Luke like, was like, okay, up. since you're the least favorite, yeah. this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to cater to the needs of everyone in the oh, past. Oh, yeah. And it so, was like I was surprised brutal. that Frank kind of jumped the hurdle here and was like, oh, throw me, you know, pick me, Jesse. Like, I'll go with you. I think he did that strategically because he knows I mean if I was there I would be like Jesse I got your back because I know Jesse's making it to the end so I think yeah. Frank thought if I help out Jesse or I look hold up yeah do you really think Frank is that intelligent whoa hey oh <laughs> what because Frank talks like this you can't be intelligent I can actually understand you when you talk like that <laughs> Forget about it. But do you really think Frank is understanding the concept of this game at yeah, all? Yeah, you know what? You're right. I take that back. <laughs> like, I feel like I think he was playing up on America, but I don't think he's really thinking of Jesse and his gameplay. I mean, it would have been smart on his part to think that way, but I guess he was just being nice. Maybe he's just a nice guy. Maybe. Yeah. Well, either way, it looked I good. mean, he thinks he's a good dude. Yeah. He said that tonight. So. He did say that. He said it like three times. He's like, America's missing out. Yeah, because I'm a good dude. <laughs> I'm a good I was dude. Like, yeah, all right, buddy. <laughs> so, we, oh, you know what? Okay, this is what really pissed me off. What? When Jesse was announced the least favorite, uh-huh. what did Jeffrey do? Jeff Rye. What oh, did Jeff well, Rye do? Everything. His facial reactions are the worst. And he laughed. Yeah. Well, let's rewind to last week's episode. Oh, when you had a Jeff clip. Rye. Like, yeah, let's rewind. <laughs> was, well, Jeff Rye was yeah. chosen as the least liked, and yeah. he cried like a little baby. Who comforted him? Yeah. Jesse. I know. He said, know. patted his back and said, don't worry, they don't see what we see. I was like, really, Jeff Rye? Yeah. Jeff Rye? Jeff Rye. Jeff, Jeff Rye. Rye. Yeah, but this is a game. Yeah. And I think this is how Jeff Rod thinks he's going to get further in the game. By, by being, being a pain in the ass? I don't know. He's just pissed everybody off, so I'm sure that he'll be gone soon. I'm hoping, but, you know. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. So we got least favorite. We got Jesse. But the most liked. Mm-hmm. Most liked Lauren. Lauren. What do you think of Lauren? I love Lauren. Someone needs to brush her hair. Well, but. she, I mean, she did, didn't she? Because she got mm-hmm. to bathe. Yeah, she got to bathe and stuff. But she's no Danielle. She, <laughs> uh, anybody else agree that Danielle is the hottest chick Who's on the, the show? Who's the hotter blonde? Yeah. Danielle. She looks like Erin Andrews slash, I don't even know. And they 
they've been giving her like some new outfits. Yeah. I think it's, you know, no wonder we moved to eight o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> we got some higher ratings. But she looked yeah, but you actually mentioned a great point. Um, you know, we have the least favorite where, you know, Jesse and Frank had to go over to the past and do some stuff. They had to what they had to clean the toilets, if you yeah. want to call those toilets, the holes in the ground. Yeah. Um what else? They, Ma- they had to massage their feet. And yeah, that was disgusting. the funniest thing when that's Frank disgusting. Had to massage Jr. and Steve's feet. That's gross. That was disgusting. His feet are gross. <laughs> feet should not be. <laughs> he feels like he lost his manhood. For yeah. He's like, I don't massage men's feet. <laughs> <For us>. so, <laughs> he probably crumbled feet. He was like, ah. I'm surprised he actually yeah. did it. And then did you see him chopping wood? Oh like, yeah, <laughs> like he could have just sat on it and yeah. would have. It was crushed. like he had like a little like toothpick. He was just like, <laughs> But so that was what they had to do on that side. And then the other side, so who was with Lauren? Lauren went over Lauren with Lauren chose Sa- Sam, Sam right? to okay. go on their spa day and to get yeah. some massages. And one of them said, I believe it was Lauren, we left as men, and now we're coming back as women. Yeah. She's like, I haven't even used a toothbrush. I was like, that's disgusting. That's disgusting. But they got to spend some time in the tub together. I mean, this was one of your favorite p- parts. Like, what do you what do you think about it? It was like an episode of the real world. Uh, <laughs> and no, it was great. It was, you know, it was actually a pretty long sequence. Yeah. Was, unless it was just me rewinding and forwarding and reminding and forwarding but uh, it was a great scene you know they got to clean each other up they shaved their legs uh you know i noticed you know what they look like out of their loincloths so it was great i love how they like put them in these like white little bathing suits oh yeah and then i won't get too graphic but you know i'm I'm just upset they didn't put jesse in the past uh garment like you know they didn't they didn't put him in any like animal hide or some loincloth oh yeah i guess they they probably said no to it i mean that would raise some ratings too you know I don't know the animal hide. Is that like well, just if he shut up in a loincloth and I was like cleaning so. the toilet. Yeah, until PETA gets a hold of you. <laughs> it's like cleaning toilets in a loincloth. All right, let's mark that down for James next birthday. <laughs> <laughs> See what we can do. So uh, after these little, you know, these montages of what they're doing, yes. they come back. They come back out to the present mm-hmm. once again. And they kind of discuss, you know, who's going to be the decider of yes. each team. I think Epoch was really smart in picking Sam because he, she did communicate effectively in the Worldly Challenge. She's she's yeah. a really good team player. And I think if they're playing off popularity index, mm-hmm. Sam was a good person to throw in there. I think that was smart. And I think Danielle was a genius. To say. I mean, I, I mean, not let alone Danielle's hot. But is she not one of the best players they have? She's very fair. She's got integrity. You know what I mean? Like, do you like Danielle? Are you a fan? Danielle's probably one of the only people I actually find to be a little bit redeeming on your side. Like, she, to me, is someone that you want to root for. And she's a saint compared to everyone else on her team. Well, I mean, yes, dealing with, you know, what we had with Jesse and then Jeff Rye. And And then Frank. And Mercy and Frank. Yeah, what do we got left? Frank into that next. Unless that's great. I mean, she she's, spoken, she's like, kind of new, yeah, she's kind of neutral yeah. now. Yeah, she's uh, she's kind of fell off for me. I haven't really paid much attention to her, so maybe she's going to come out in the next episode out of nowhere yeah, and really do something. But flying under the radar a little bit. Yeah, well, Mercy's not. So we're left off last night with mm-hmm. Danielle and Sam. Sam. Did you vote? I did not have a chance to vote because <sighs> I kept replaying that scene from the episode. <laughs> Then I voted for both of us. Okay, so you voted. I think you can vote for about ten times, which you know I try to do more than that. But <laughs> I voted ten times for Sam. So you did vote for Sam. I did vote okay. for Sam. So your votes went. To Thank Sam. you for doing that for me. Of I course, it. absolutely. <laughs> so tonight's episode started off, you know, yet again. They yes. chose their deciders and they go back to their their houses, their worlds, mm-hmm. and they discuss what they're going to do if the deciders chosen from their side. Who yes. are they going to throw in? So. It's nice to see that kind of dynamic, but I also think it's kind of like a pointless part of the show. I don't think it's pointless, especially this episode. I mean, they were over discussing, you know, when they're in the room. Yeah. Did you notice how they called JR out? Yeah. I mean, they called JR and Jeff Rye's situation out. Oh, yeah. I was very surprised that they were even keen on I didn't even know they knew. Well, I, mean, what I, know, I don't mean, like, pointless. Like, okay. it shouldn't be in the show, period. I just think it's, like, a weird placement, almost. Like, yeah, it is where they put it in the sequence of the episodes. Like, Wednesday strange. night episodes, to me, are just kind of, ugh. I mean, well, until you get to the challenges. Exactly. Yeah. Before the challenges, it's kind of like, yeah. And even when there's one point when they take them out, when you saw uh, Jeff Rye and JR just speaking out, I was like, what's going on? I don't Why do they have them speaking and doing an interview about why they're, we get it. That was weird. Like, I understand it. And you know the teams I mean? are, they yeah, don't no know. one notices that Jeff Rye's gone. The guy doesn't shut up. Like, I would notice if he was gone two seconds. And then they realize JR's gone. I, it's fishy. Yeah. But... Mm. You're right. They did have this drama that went down mm-hmm. while discussing because you see Jeff Rye get upset yes. in the middle of this discussion saying, I don't want to go in. And if I did, I don't want to go against JR. Yeah. 
I think he shot himself in the foot with that statement. Completely, it shot raised some in the foot. Uh, ears a little bit. Like why? Jesse why knows. JR? Yeah, Jesse knows something's up. Jesse called him out. He didn't like that Jesse called him out, so he went on the defense, mm -hmm. and then he left the room, stormed out of the room, which makes you look terrible to the rest of your team. Oh yeah. Danielle noticed that, and Danielle is very big about integrity and playing a fair game. Mm -hmm. So Danielle starts to think you're just ruining your everybody on the team. You're ruining your chances. With. Yeah, and she kept her cool. She kept her calm. Oh, she was great. She's yeah. very composed until she found him in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Speaking to JR. In the bathroom. Yes. Again, when I spoke with Luke, I even said, like, what's going on here? And he said, it'll be interesting to see how see? this plays out because they're eventually going to get caught. Yeah. And they did. Tonight. And what happened when Jeff Fry got caught, James? He started crying. What a surprise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but he tells us that these tears are not real, that these tears are just, well, my mom always tells me that I just cry just on the, it's a, you know, we don't no. buy it, Jeff, right? We just don't buy it. Like, if you're trying to win us over, it's not working. I don't know all. if he's trying to win us over, if he's just trying to play a game. I don't get it. He probably is trying to get sympathy votes, at least, for this popularity index. It's terrible. Because when I tweet, I'm like, stop crying. You're a little bee. I want him to come home <laughs> so I can tweet him. That's what I really want. Yeah, just, when he gets eliminated, I'm like, will you please call him? We want to hear your, your two cents. Oh, and no, he's no. going to be like, I heard everything you guys were saying. Well, you already got people calling in that I already was like, oh, I'm not a fan of that one. You're like, guess who we have on the show tonight? <laughs> oh, thanks, James. Sounds like great. Yeah, why don't we just bring in Miley Cyrus next? You know, It's for our fans. It's yeah. for our fans. Okay, we do it for you guys. <laughs> we do it for I, you I'm guys. not speaking. I'm just going to sit there. Um, I, uh, I like that the Epoch team really sits down and they're very aware of what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. they, they really kind of plan it out and they discuss do. it. And you know, I like how Lauren was very observant about Danielle. She said, oh, Danielle came over and she's about to play this game with integrity and that's the role she's playing. I don't necessarily think Danielle's playing a role, but I think she's playing it up to an extent. I think, you think? I think to an extent she's playing it up, yeah, it's a game, but I think she's just an honest athletic person she's just got that teammate mentality and i think she spelled that out for you guys i think that your team basically just picked up what she was throwing out there yeah but um yeah i think that i don't think it's i don't think she's playing it up really that much i don't know no but i think she's definitely trying to win votes you think so yeah i don't know i love her because like she I kind of emer you know what i mean like at, at the beginning she was like you know a little neutral she was just kind of there well she's getting more comfortable she's yeah. in a different role now because she's you know the you know she gets more clout. And every week when they show the popularity index to the, the future side, yeah. she's usually kind of up there. So yeah. I think she's kind of like, if I remain in this this role, not that that's her mentality, but if she's like playing this up a little I bit, think it's she's going to stay up there. It's something that any player should do, but I don't think that's her motive. I don't know. I think she's just genuinely just playing a fair game. Hmm. Watch her oh. turn into like a Mercy. Next oh well, week. if that happens next episode, I'm just I'm giving up because <laughs> I need, I liked Mercy and she caught me off guard. So we got so now friendship with Jr. Spoke about that. I want to know what you guys think. Let us know. Tweet us. Um, you want to yeah. give out your Twitter? Oh yeah, handle at James quick? Wallington. James Wellington. Wellington, and I'm always on Twitter, but you get yeah. crap for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I am at Mikey Benzea, and uh, I'm not always on Twitter. I use it normally. I don't have a problem like some people do. <coughs> James. Oh, yeah. I, I, well, I have, we have some tweets. It's, it's interesting. Got, like, you know, have people good. asking us questions. Someone tweeted V1 underscore man on Twitter. His mm -hmm. name's Dave Garner. How do you feel about Jesse Wilson, Jesse, having oh, acting and prior reality TV background? Ooh. Acting like and question. prior reality yeah, TV background? Yeah, at the beginning he said he was an actor. Am I being fooled by Jesse? Oh, he's I, he's one of the most intelligent players on the show. You know right what? Now. I think that hey, if you want to go into a competition series, you have to deal with whatever the producer is going to throw at you. Yeah. If this guy, this kid has been on another reality show, okay. So what if you've worked somewhere where you were able to climb mountains? I don't know. Is that going to help you? You know what I mean? Like everybody has their benefits. Like Rachel was a gamer. Okay. Yeah. So maybe his benefit is that he's done this game before, and he, you know, he's got the mental game. Yeah. So I don't. I think it. You know, I think it's fair. I do too. I mean. He makes good television, and having yeah. reality TV background, I think, is actually aiding to his I think gameplay. So. so I wonder if the other teammates know that he has a reality TV background. I don't know. I mean, if you're not I'm like curious. a reality buff like myself, can it's we like, ask tonight? We should ask uh, Wyatt, Wyatt if he knows. Good question. When Wyatt calls yeah. him, I'll ask him. As long as he good doesn't point. yell at us like he did in the last episode. Um, and Luke <laughs> tweeted me, which I will wait till the end to <laughs> share. BFFs. <laughs> Wait to the, you must stay tuned. Because I, I was giving him crap on Twitter, so we'll get to that. Okay. But before we move on to mm -hmm. the end of this episode, so I just want to say... Oh, Angela, I was just going to tell people to What's make that? sure they 
rate, comment, and subscribe on iTunes. Oh, do it. No, 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 definitely do that. You know, like, I know a lot of you liked us in our togas last week. If you want to see that again, maybe at some point. Yeah, because I'm comment sweating. and subscribe. It's I'm really done. hot in here. We it should is. have been wearing, like, loincloths and stuff today. What are we wearing next week? Because I can't do this <laughs> normal social outfit set society oh, makes me wear. This show is crazy. You're crazy. crazy. The show is crazy. Um, Angela's cool though. Angela's cool. I, I again, I like. I loved that she said, you know, it's go big or yes. go home. And she came into this with the fighting warrior spirit. And I have to, you know, commend her for that because I like to see fighters in reality television shows. Yeah. I don't like to see people that are just gonna sit by, like Jeff Rye, and yeah. think that he's just gonna get to the end, it's, coast to the end. No, yeah, I need someone make who's bold gonna, moves yes. and fight hard. Yeah. But unfortunately, she went big and went home. But well, <laughs> I think before she went home, she called it the David and Goliath. Kind of going against yeah, the, the and then she's like he's like the yeah. elephant versus the mouth mouse <laughs> the ma mouth versus the mouse versus the mouse mouse yeah and you know I was sad to see her go but um I'm glad Frank stayed yeah because I'm a fan of Frank and Angela's a competitor but you mm, know what? I'm so excited that Frank stayed I th <laughs> That's so weird. Let's talk about this because a lot of people were what? tweeting me tonight. Like I know they feel I'm like not it was the stupid. From they you. think it was stupid strategy to what? throw in Angela against Frank. I think it was stupid on Angela's part to choose to be chased. No, I think that was the smartest thing that she did was to choose to be chased. No. Uh, yeah. I, well, do you I think mean, Frank she, could really maneuver all that? I thought Frank was not going to be able to get underneath that box. I thought he was not even going to be able to get that far. So that's why I thought it was smart <sighs> that she did that because I thought that he wasn't going to be able to catch up to her. Now, the other yeah. way around, you, I mean, I guess you're saying that he's slow and she wouldn't be able to chase him down, but... I don't know. I, well, going into this, I really liked this Duel of Destiny because it brought me back to capture and the whole chasing and like to try and ta attack each other. I didn't like how Luke said that they were going to have to climb, crawl, or jump. Those are three things he listed for us as an audience to be aware of in this duel. Climb, crawl, or jump. What did Frank do? Frank was just a giant monster who climbed. And busted through the obstacles. He did. You know what I, I mean? It's like, to me, like, he kind of defeated the purpose of the whole challenge. I mean, and I, I hate that. I think physically he couldn't help it. No, he charged those poles. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, are you, are, am, am I getting from you that this was an unfair challenge? I, yes. It, I don't agree. I, I don't think it was executed the way producers wanted it to be executed. But then they could always, well, they, there's nothing you can do once you start the challenge. But. That's true. And that's what I'm saying when like, well, Luke tweeted me back tonight. Oh, wait. You have, like, Because I tweeted Luke. And what did you I say? Said, I hear what you said to Luke. I said to Luke, what kind of BS was that? You said jump, climb, and crawl, not bust through obstacles. Oh, and what did Luke say back? He goes, they both knew how each obstacle could be used to meticulous detail. You should know, mate, they don't walk in blind. Also, James just got blocked by Luke Tipple on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so, but he makes a really good point, you know, they from go experience. Before you go into a challenge, you get the rules, yes. and you it's very clear yeah, what you can and can't do. I don't know if you guys know or if anyone's dealt with any reality TV behind the scenes, but they literally sit you down before you do any, any situation like that, and they're like, these are the rules. Does everyone understand it? And everybody needs to agree before they move forward. So I can't yeah. go with that unfair I just, advantage. I think I was just frustrated because I really do like Angela. And yeah. I really wanted so badly as a viewer. It would have been great television oh, yeah. to see her completely kick Frank's ass. I thought that was going to happen because that's usually what happens with reality TV. You know what I mean? Like you're the, the underdog, the upset. Yeah. But it was two seconds and she was gone. And I was like, oh, so this is the way this game is going to play out. Yeah. And if we don't have a turnaround next episode... I really, I don't know what I'm going to do because I feel like it's, I enjoy winning. Yes, I like that my team is winning, but uh, we need to switch it up a little bit. I, I, yeah, this is, this is so, there's so many, I tweeted tonight and I, I've gotten a lot of great response mm -hmm. that this game is an amazing concept and I had high hopes going into it. And now as a viewer, I'm just so frustrated. I like, I'm just pissed off because it's unfair. There's nothing fair about this competition. Yeah, they entered this game. They kind of knew what they were getting themselves into. That's one of the arguments I got. Mm -hmm. But that you don't really, when you enter a new concept for a show, it's not like Big Brother or Survivor where you go into it kind of understanding how the game is played. But these teams went in blind, one side to the past, one side to the future. And, and they, the people in the yeah. past got the shit under the stick. Well, that's what I'm saying. With our show, it was like they chose our teams, but we all lived fair. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no one was living in a cave. No one, it was just across the board. So maybe if they started from the beginning, had everybody across the board, they were all in the future. They were all, you know, everybody had the same advantage. Yeah. Or they got to choose somehow. But 
I don't know. I just think that hopefully next episode something changes. Yeah. And you know, otherwise, I just think going to write a tweet. <laughs> I'm going to write a tweet. I'm going to be very vocal about it. I just. I, I feel like if they if they come back for a second season and I do feel like there there could be another season, if they do they need to do a challenge you know have one challenge where the it's guys do it and it determines where, how the guys are okay. going to be divided. Then the girls play that same challenge and that determines how the girls will be divided. Yeah. That way they're entering at fair at a fair level. A fair advantage. They competed. You lost. That's on that's on you. Yeah. Well, I'm curious to see. I mean, we discussed it before, but I'm wondering if. If there was something that was put in, like, what was the reasoning behind putting them on the separate teams? Was it just a coin toss? That's what, that's I, that's what, what I Ra- want to know. Is that what Rachel said? I think she said there was just like a coin toss remember. or something that was done behind the scenes. But it's just, I don't believe, I don't, I don't know if I believe that. I don't want to go into detail. Oh, I feel like there, there will be a book that drops that James will be writing called Conspiracy <laughs> Theory of, <laughs> of the show, Opposite Worlds, the real Opposite Worlds. But I mean, like, do you get what I'm saying? No, like, I understand. I understand why you're so. How frustrated would you be yes. thrown into the past? And, and not really have an advantage. You, you have no advantage. You're withering away. You're completely withering yeah. away. Yeah. There's, I, 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 again, Luke, I don't see the advantage to being in the but past. But we're only halfway through the season. That's true. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of turns. There's a lot of things that can happen. We'll see. But we're halfway through, and I feel like, as again, as just a viewer... They need a they need a spice step, mix things yeah. up a little bit. But I, I want to see the worlds completely get separated. And, and which divided. can happen, things can happen. I think what they thought is maybe they put some strong personalities on the future side, and that would just ruin them, yeah. and they would get comfortable. But they are getting ruined. But I think Jesse's holding them together. Yeah, I think that he, you know, is keeping them in line. I have a quick question: Are our file our phone lines open? Oh no. Uh, no, it's not. Did you want me to... My Could we please? I think I, we're going to have Wyatt call is, in. Is my uncle calling in from Jia? Just give me a few <laughs> minutes, okay, guys? <laughs> of yeah. course. Um, so, I mean, th- that's just... Those are my frustrations. I really do like this show. I'm a huge fan of reality TV. Social so I'm media still aspect. sucked in. Yeah. yeah. The social media aspect completely sets this apart from any other yes. show that's on television right now. Yeah. And, like... I love that because I feel engaged. I'm always tweeting and hashtagging opposite worlds. And then if you're watching the show yeah. and you're passionate about someone you like or someone you don't like, tweet it. Yeah. And hashtag opposite worlds so it gets factored into the Twitter popularity. No, definitely. Index. And send it to me. If you have like something funny or someone you don't like on the show, I enjoy those tweets. I really like reading those. Yeah. So I like more of the ones where, you know, they're making fun of someone and enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little, it's like, comedic. For like when I tweet about Jeff Rye. I love them. I, I eat that stuff up. I love it. Lines I just are, favorite. Lines are open. If, uh, lines are open. Are lines getting... are open. So now that the I lines are like open. It's like a telethon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, try again. I feel like I'm on that episode of Full House. Do you remember that episode? Oh, Where which they're, one? Like, they're calling in. It's like the teledon and like everybody's. Oh, like, vaguely remember yeah, that. Rebecca Donaldson. Can we have <laughs> her call in? What's she up to? Lori Laughlin? <laughs> Is the number 424-256-1633? Can you give that up? No. Hold on. Hold on. I don't know how he got this number because I did not give this to Wyatt. Wait, are you texting Wyatt right now? We're Facebook chatting. Oh, God. You guys are like best friends. <laughs> <laughs> you get Wyatt. Wyatt, it's... I want some friends. Guys, the number for the studio is 424-256-1729. Okay. I just gave him that number. So let's... Hopefully Wyatt will actually get through to us. Because I'm dying to know what Wyatt's perspective is you're on like the show. You're like friends with Wyatt. You're friends with Rachel. <laughs> I get Snooky. I grew up with Snooky. You get... <laughs> well, you're friends with Rachel, too. So yeah, I know. We're tight now. We're, I am t- a fan of Rachel. You guys, you should really like her. She's pretty cool. Huh? Oh, no. Is it not working, Steven? Where's Wyatt It's working. From? It's 10 o'clock, though. Yeah, where's he? Uh, uh, you're on the line, uh, caller. Hello? Yeah, you got Wyatt Cocoa Beach. How's it going, Wyatt? I love it. Cocoa it's Beach. Good. It's good. Good. Florida. So, uh, thank you for calling in. We appreciate it. Hey, no worries, man. I've been excited about talking to you. Ever since you guys talk about my buffaloes. Good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> are you on a buffalo right now? <laughs> Oh, that is negative. He is sleeping. <laughs> well, we That's don't actually good. have that much time left, but I really want to hear, like, what was the experience like for you overall? Overall, it was uh, quite wonderful. Uh, something that I've never experienced. You know, I've been overseas and combat zones blown up and shot at, but um, this experience was, uh, you know, all that worse, actually. Wow. <laughs> but fun. It was fun. What was the toughest part of this entire experience, would you say? Well, I think I was on the wrong show. I think I was trying to play Survivor. <laughs> oh, uh, hell yeah. You know, Survivor, they keep the guys around to provide and take care and, and make food and fire. Yeah. And uh, these guys were more, you know, housebroken and uh, didn't appreciate my skills. 
Mm. Is that, well, speaking of that, about your team and stuff, people are tweeting in that you get, flipped the bird to your team. Is Like, what happened? Well, I live by a warrior ethos, which is you watch my six, I watch yours. You know, you hear me talk about the pack, things you guys didn't get to see behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, we were very um, united in that way. And they hit me with a, you know, a broadside. And when you're in a battle situation and you're, your buddy who's supposed to be watching your six falls asleep and you get wounded or shot, you're not very happy about it. Yeah, so it's, a, it's an that insult. Yeah. Rather personal. I wasn't happy about the way they side blinded me like that. Yeah. Sure. And, and what, it's tough. It's right there. It, you, everything's on camera. It's like right afterwards. And when you're in the heat of the moment, you know, yeah. you react. Were you aware of the alliance between Jeffrey and JR? Oh, yeah. You know, he, he fooled us a little bit. Um, and I think where I was disappointed with JR was we did know he was talking. Uh -huh. To Jeff Fry, and uh, he'd come back and report, but him hoarding the food in that way was disappointing because even when we had the, the meal that was re awarded to us, I was, you know, scrap scrapping food to take it back to the clan yeah. so we all could eat. And he ate all this. And I was really disappointed he wasn't sharing. If he'd have been sharing the food, we'd have been like, yeah, keep it up, man. You know, whatever. Just get us some food. Yeah, you could have used that to the advantage for the team, for the overall. Yeah, I mean, there was times I was, you know, I was, climb, you know, I climbed the wall over there. People don't know about that. I, I took a, a dip in the jacuzzi while everybody was sleeping. <laughs> that's all. And, uh, oh, yeah, that's pretty I cool. scavenged around for some food and stuff while they weren't, you know, weren't aware of it. That's awesome. <laughs> that's great. That is great inside information. That's amazing. That's like pool dipping. Like in I wish I would pool. see more of that kind of strategy. I wish we saw more of that stuff. Did like you that. watch tonight's episode? I did. I did. I was quite, uh, you know. I'm impressed with another bad decision by Team Epoch. Yeah. You know, we had a strategy to go in. We could have controlled or run that game from the past by simply getting America's popular vote and taking out their week one at a time. Yeah. I guess they were so hell-bent on trying to get into the future and all the luxuries and didn't like that lifestyle, which I had no problem with. They were willing to gamble. You know, they, first they threw me in, now they're throwing Angela. And for whatever reason, they haven't used that Quidditch kit who's got, you know, stalker, chasing, finder, whatever the hell they do in that game for nothing. Yeah, that, I was surprised by that. But you know what? We still got a couple episodes left. Yeah. We'll see where they go with that. But, why? thank you so much for calling in, man. Really appreciate it. And I know your weather's good down there, so I know you're enjoying <laughs> yourself. Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. I'm, I'm happy to finally talk to you guys. I wish I had more time. Got I know. We do, too. We're sorry to We'll Russia. be looking at you, see what you do next, man. Yeah, no worries. I'm looking forward to it, man. And um, I can't wait to hear what you guys uh, have to say with Angela. She'll have fun with you. Oh, heck yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for calling in, and I'm sure we'll All chat right. with you on Facebook in a little bit. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we'll keep up the good work, man. I like what you guys do. Thank you very right, so much. Have a good one. Have a good night, bro. All right. That was so sweet for him to stay up late. All right. Where can they find you, Mikey B? <laughs> Mikey Benzaia. M-I-K-E-Y-B-E-N-Z-A-I-A. -E -E awesome. And you can find me on Twitter at James Wallington and on Instagram at Mr. James Wally. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe to our iTunes. And we will see you next week. Thanks, From guys. executive Woo! producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. You later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.